What is going on everyone and welcome back to more Black Desert. So I want to do make an updated video to something I've talked about before because I hear it a lot pretty regularly whether it's on like Reddit or just my guild or just everywhere in general. So people are getting burnt out of the game and are trying to find ways to make this game fun again. So if this is you, uh, I just want to go over a few things that I did setting goals and how to avoid burnout in BDO. I know that happens a lot and it's definitely happened to me as well. But as you guys know, BDO is a sandbox game and you can do whatever you want. Basically play how you want, do whatever. There's no real end game. I mean, there is, but there's not really. So yeah, I just wanted to cover in this video, like more of the PVE side of things. And if you're just a PvPer, that's fun every day, I think, more or less. And uh, you'll find something new every day for PvPers. But for everyone else who has come from another MMO and thinks it's like it's a traditional one, it's not. So one thing I want to do before we start is if you haven't already checked out my video or check out the video I uploaded yesterday, it's more that was one for 10 new player tips and while they are more tailored towards beginners, um, I think people who have just started and even like non end game players will find it very interesting. So you guys can watch that video as well as uh, feel free to leave your comments on it as well. If you want to give advice to newer players yourself, I love reading the comments and seeing maybe things I missed and whatnot. So yeah, check that one out, the video. Um, it's on the channel. I uploaded it like a day or two ago. So that's with the thumbnail. And with that said, yeah. So setting goals in BDO. I know when you first start BDO, it's very confusing. A lot of stuff is unintuitive and um, you just kind of have to figure out what you're doing. So if you've come from like all you do is you got into the game and all you do is just start grinding circles, making money, and then you gotta get burnt out of that. I just wanted to talk about some of the life skills and just other things you can try out as well. So understandably, everyone has their own play sale. That's cool. But um, first of all, if you are a grinder and you have no idea where to go, and this has just been like a ongoing thing that a lot of people have been asking me and just in general is like, where do I grind at XAP? Where do I go now? What's the most money? Where do I like do everything? So one thing you could do is check the um, like monster info thing. Like you just search for it somewhere. I don't remember where it is. I just have mine pinned. And basically what you do here is try out different spots and you could sort it by like AP and everything. And for the most part, we have a video that I might do another update just because things change every now and then just by balance. And um, yeah, you could sort it and then figure out where to go. I did actually, before we just say anything, I have looked at every single one of them and I have my opinions on a lot of spots. And usually the game gives a recommendation on like your AP and DP of where you should be. And I think about like 95% of them are pretty accurate and uh yeah so what do i mean by that like if you are within x amount of ap dp bracket you you'll be fine just grinding most of these spots um the only thing i really would strongly advise against is some of the very end games so like basically you're into one percent at this point and you don't even need to hear this information is in terms of grinding i know olin's has a very high APDP requirement and same with crypt of resting thoughts now these are very high-end bars that you reach and these are basically the only ones i would say even if you have the gear it is still pretty scary being at it and if you don't know mechanics at olin's it doesn't matter if you have 400 dp you're getting one-shotted by like a mechanic so yeah a lot of these are pretty accurate minus like the very high-end spots that are more mechanically intense than anything so yeah if you're a grinder and you're burnt out of centaurs because everyone tells you that's the best money it is for like seasonal characters up to like 260 and after 260 a lot of spots open up and then try different things i would try like sakraya histria 
go for like relic pieces and everything so yeah one thing i know that people are always focused on is grinding for silver now understandably silver is like everything it makes you get gains faster and everything however if you get burnt out of the game and you're not having fun anymore that defeats the purpose of it so what you would do is go for relic items or ancient whatever they call it antiquities something like that so like go for infinite potions because i would always recommend people who don't have these to get them as soon as possible you can even do it on season characters most of the grind spots are relatively easy and um especially once you get out of season uh once you get to the higher end spots the infinite health potion if anything is going to be a huge help and like not having to ever think about buying a potion again is probably one of the best quality of life things and especially if you're grinding high end spots you're going to be popping them on cooldown and if you have the fairy to com combine it um then you'll be you'll be set and you just don't have to think about it so yeah for grinders just uh try different spots go for rare items such as like the compass archaeologist map rich merchant ring but i feel like if you're going for the rich merchant ring you probably are already set and you know what you're doing but with that said for everyone else who wants to do everything in the game just experience everything instead of just grinding i want to talk about the life skills a little bit and what are my favorite spots to go to uh how do you do this what does it mean and everything so Let's say you've never done a life skill before and you're like, where do I start? So this is very tricky to talk about because life skills are all very different and you need different gear for everything. And I don't really want to go into too much detail for this one, but I will say, let's say you have enough silver to get yourself like entry level life skill gear. All right, you're already there. Um, let's talk about where we go from here. So gathering is basically the number one life skill that I would recommend to most people because um, gathering opens up a lot of other life skills such as cooking, alchemy, processing, and um, well, yeah, a lot of stuff. So gathering and hunting, we'll talk about in a second. Basically you get raw materials, right? We'll call those raw materials tier ones, tier one mats. You take these mats and you can either sell it on the market, which usually I'd recommend um, not doing unless you know what you're doing or like, I'm going to be honest, grinding is always going to be a little bit more money an hour than gathering. However, with that said, if you gather an hour at wherever place, you could turn those tier one materials into tier two. So like... For example, with cooking, you make higher level stuff and you could either turn it into like Imperial delivery boxes or you could just cook them and use it for, you know, food, whatever, sell it on the market and then you make more profit. So we'll call those tier two materials, right? And then you can even go further and beyond the higher your life skills are. So that's how people make more profit just by learning how to do a life skill and then turning it into something else. And then I would say learning alchemy early on is pretty helpful because um, once you are higher end or like, let's say you have more gear, you're like over, I don't know, 280 AP or something. That's what most people are at these days, right? I have no idea. So alchemy is used for potions, elixirs, and drafts. And as you guys know, right now in this game if you look at elixirs some of them are very hard to get like you see how most of these are sold out and the irrelevant ones that you need if you're doing an elixir rotation is like look how many orders on that so if you want to do elixir rotations at high end rotations and grinding you're making them yourself there's uh no way so there is actually a calculation and you always want to be using the blue ones and if you're using the green ones you're better off just using a straight up draft or something one of these 
And, uh, like, they kind of... These are basically the same thing as running elixirs. However, if you do a full elixir rotation, you're getting, like, one or two extra stats or effects that are more, which makes it technically better. So, yeah, it's more of those high-end things that I would say people should learn early on doing alchemy. And, um... So, yeah, gathering... You turn your tier 1 materials into tier 2 and so on, tier 3, whatever. Just make more money and figure out that's more profit. And ultimately, at the end of the day, like, the gear path... I know everyone is at a different level now, but there is, believe it or not, a hard cap in this game as of right now. And at some point, everyone is going to get to a, a point in the game where they'll just be fine. And yeah, that's it. So... In my opinion, of all the life skills, which ones are the profitable ones? That's the big question I get a lot as well. So, gathering, obviously, if you take your materials and turn them into something else, that makes a lot of silver. Um, hunting is a fun activity. They had to buff this one quite a few times, actually. So, hunting is basically gathering with extra steps, but it is very profitable if you know what you're doing. So, yeah, I actually have a video on a lot of all of these things I'm talking about in more detail, which I'll probably do an update in like December or something when I get more time. So hunting is also one of those things where if you're going for the infinite mana potion, you might want to do that because it gives the Voltara's clairvoyance. And uh, that one is pain and suffering for basically everybody unless you get carried. <laughs> so yeah, hunting is a pretty good one, profitable. And gathering is basically the same thing um fishing i feel like they need to buff fishing in this game it's one of those things that i would say people do but as an afk activity most people do anyway so like go to any body of river or like the ocean and uh you just afk fish and then you come back with more money it's not really an activity you want to be doing unless you're going to be away from your computer for a long time it's just extra silver on the side uh, cooking, very profitable. You either use the materials or you just sell it. And then I would say an important thing to do with cooking is learn how to get stuff for Imperial delivery. And um, if you go to Heidel, then you'll figure out like what materials you could use to turn into Imperial boxes. And you want to do the highest tier you can. So like Guru, Master, and basically every tier of the life skill you're doing. And so just do the highest one you can. One tip I would give you guys is find something you enjoy gathering and then stick to that. And even if it's uh, a little bit less profitable, but like if you enjoy doing it, you're avoiding burnout, right? That's like the entire point of this video, <laughs> trying not to burn yourself out of this game. And so eventually once you figure out that cooking isn't actually as hard as you might think it is, where all you have to do is find out what nodes you can have connected to get you, like, materials, and then you gather the ones that are the bottlenecks, and then you cook them all together, and suddenly you just have money, and then you do what you want with that one. So, it's hard to explain cooking, because things change, and prices are fluctuate all the time, but... If you guys have no idea, if you are on PC, I'm not sure what the console key is, but if you go to like hit your F2 button and then you hit crafting notes, you could pretty much look up a lot of things and just figure out like what you want to do, especially if you're like cooking. You just type in the item you think you want to find. There are a few sites like the BDO Codex one, which I do use every now and then, and then it just tells you like where to find the materials. This one just tells you, the in-game one, just tells you how to make it, assuming you have the materials already. But BDO Codex will tell you where to find it as well. So, yeah, that's a good thing. But I don't know what it is on console, but on PC, it's your F2 button by default. Then you hit crafting notes, and then it goes from there. So, oh god, I think I pressed something. Okay. So alchemy, making potions, you want to learn how to do this early on because eventually at high end, uh, you're going to have to make your own potions because as of right now, they are not available on the market and 
You gotta figure it out. Processing is an AFK activity. Um, basically, here's how it works. If you have... I know this is one of those, like, pay-to-win things. But if there's any, like, outfit on the Pearl Shop that I would recommend actually getting from, like, the costumes that help enhance life skills, I would recommend getting the Alchemy and the Processing one. I think this is Processing, yeah. So... Actually, you don't even need the alchemy. Honestly, processing is probably the only one you really need. The reasoning why is by default, for processing, if you are not wearing the outfit, you can't you you can't like process an item without the raw material or the tier one material in your inventory. Now, if you have it, this is what it looks like. You get the extra button to process here, and then you wear your like processing stone, and then you can just like process while the materials are in your storage and instead of your inventory. So that means you can AFK longer. So I know that is a, a pearl cost, but I think if there's anything, any costume you buy that helps, that would be probably the only one I would recommend. Everything else is just like, you swim faster, who cares? You can you can save time on your cooking and alchemy. And you, nowadays, it's in 2022, there are a lot of potions and stuff that will basically do the same thing. So I have a lot of these outfits, but I also bought them like four or five years ago. So like, I just have it. But nowadays, as a new player, the processing one is probably the only one that I think is more or less relevant. Um, Let's see, training is... Actually, I think training is important now because... Training is basically horse breeding, like you get horses and then you level them up and then that's how it goes from there. So as you guys know, with horses, um, there's something that we all want to go for is like coursers, right? And then getting all the skills on your horse, like how does it, how does horse training affect your life skill? So the higher your level is, um, every time it levels up, the stats have a chance to roll higher. It's all RNG, but like you get a lot of benefits. So if you if your training is higher, they sell for more on the market, assuming you are selling them, which is one thing that uh, I'm not really I haven't gotten into training too much because it's just not as like kind of an AFK activity, but I understand that it's important now. So as you get tier nine and I guess tier 10, if you ever go for that, uh, a lot of the stuff you have to do is something you're going to want to do by yourself. And you can't just always rely on the market to get everything you want. Now you can, but it's especially with tier 10, you cannot, but don't worry about that. If you have a tier 10, you already know what you're doing and then you don't need my help. So anyway, horse training, what I would do now in the current meta is get a horse that is tier 6 or higher, or I guess even tier 5 works, but tier 6, get it to level 15, and then either Imperial delivery it, you'll get money and materials, and the materials you use from it are the, let me, let me actually go find it, hold on, um, yeah, so you get these flower of oblivion things, right? This is what you get from Imperial delivering a horse level 15 or higher at level or tier five and up. And you use these for tier 10 horse attempts. And this is really for late game stuff. But if you have it, then you're going to you'll thank me one day if you ever decide you want to push tier 10. And uh, yeah, it's very it's just a late game thing. But otherwise, sell it on the market and um you just make silver from that one. Training is a lot of AFK activity. Um, just catch horses, AFK train them to 15 or 15 and up, sell them on the market, profit. And we talk about mastery a lot. And mastery, I think, is a lot more important nowadays than like the levels. Obviously, you want to hit like levels as in like master, guru, but um as important as they are, 
you can get mastery from gear and artifacts, light stones, and everything. So, for the most part, every time you level up a life skill, you get plus five mastery. It's permanent. And then you just get bonuses along the way. But mastery is more important than anything here. And then you could just hover over every single one and it'll, it'll tell you a tooltip. Uh, so, yeah, training, I think, is pretty good. Uh, it's not a lot of money, but you get more the higher your level is. And as of right now, with people going for tier 9s and tier 10s, um, I think it's important. Uh, trading. Trading has been a dead life skill since, like, 2016. <laughs> um, so basically, you know what bartering... Trading and bartering is the same thing, except one is in the ocean and one is on land. So basically, what you do is go to, like, a trader of any town, right? And then you bring the, like, local trade item from point A to B. And so you bring it, like, I don't know, from Altanova to Calpheon or something. Basically, the way uh, profits work from trading is by distance traveled. So basically, what you'd want to do if for that is, like, pick something up at Grana and then dump it off at Valencia and is the most profit. Or if you are gathering, which leads into the other one, you'll get materials such as like um, byproducts, uh, these things, for example. You see how it says an origin and then how much is uh, trade silver cost, whatever. The further the distance, the more silver you get, plus your like trading mastery. Um, it's fun the first few times you do it, and then you realize I could just be grinding or doing literally any other life skill and make more silver. So, trading definitely needs a buff. Uh, if you want to do it, by all means. Um, yeah, you bring product A from point A to point B, profit. But the profit's not that good. Um, farming is something I think that people should look into. Now, it's not really something you do super actively. Like, you set up some farms, you let things grow. It's almost like it's real life. And then you harvest the items, and then you use those materials that you harvested, like the fruits and vegetables, to get other materials for various other things. So, like, if you're harvesting fruits, you can use it for cooking. And then if you turn the byproducts in, then you can get materials for your tier 9 horse, which goes into training, and so on. So, like, you see how all the life skills are connected in one way or another? Yeah. So, like, processing, you turn them into crates, and then you take those crates into trading from point A to B, money. I would not recommend doing trading unless you're really just hard trying to power up trading for some reason, but... I think you, there's a lot of other things you can do with your free time. So farming is one of those things that you do really if you know what you're doing already. So like you're doing it for a reason. You're not just farming for no reason. Now sailing is probably one of the biggest life skills that is unique to a lot of MMOs. Now let me just say a lot of MMOs have ocean content, but how many of them do it properly? I think, um, if anything, sailing is one of those things that's really fun to do, but it's kind of like an investment. I even have my own other character that's uh, basically straight up stuck in the ocean with sailing gear. And um, basically, you've seen my videos uh, where we do a lot of trading and bartering. So basically, uh, there's a lot of stuff on land to do. And then there's a lot of stuff in the ocean to do. So... It would take me so long to explain sailing. Basically, to explain bartering, it's kind of like what we just said about trading, where it's like bring point thing from point A to B. Bartering is the same thing, but in the ocean. You see like materials. Uh, let's say this NPC at this island wants this material. It'll trade you for level three materials. You trade a level two for a three, and then three to a four, and then four to a five. And then what you turn those fives in is for uh, basically coins, 
which is the ocean equivalent of silver, more or less. And then you buy stuff from there. So, yeah, I think sailing is definitely a good one for people to look into, especially if you're getting burnt out of like land content. And yeah, there's a lot of different boats you can get. It's actually really cool. I definitely spent a few months going for my Carrick. And I even have a video of that and like how to get your Carrick. Where do you go as a beginner? What you should do now and that you won't like be bottlenecked later. So definitely, if I were to categorize anything, if you are burnt out of grinding, here are some things that I would recommend for you guys. Gathering is pretty fun. Hunting is pretty fun. Uh, these three are just like AFK activities that you do after you hunt and gather. Uh, training, if you like horses and you just want to like make money off of AFK more or less activities, training is pretty fun. Uh, sailing is definitely a good one to get into, um, especially if you want some, like a new change of pace or a breath of fresh air, doing something different. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty fun. There's even a lot of quests you can do that will get you boat materials, and then it's kind of like gearing up on your main character, but you're for your boat. So it's kind of an investment, but it's definitely something new you can do. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we talked about what to do if you you only like grinding and just try out different spots. And if you are someone who likes to be a jack of all trades and likes to do everything, just gave you my recommendations on what life skills are relevant and what I think is fun. And for all of you who are just PVPers, I know right now Red Battlefield is probably one of the worst things that I can do because like, even if you're geared, it's very difficult because they have dumb mechanics in RBF that's like, oh, okay, you have a point. Now you literally take more damage if you're standing near the point. I'm like, bro, what is that? Just so I'm really hoping. Well, I know they will, but whenever they bring out Arena of Solaire season two, I'm hyped for that. Pretty cool. Gear capped PVP is always awesome. And I'm even saying this as someone who's pretty geared right now. So I like gear cap stuff. Node Wars, Sieges. Try to get into it like a Node Wars or Siege Guild. And I, I will say that Sieges aren't really that fun. They're all like scripted fights. And uh, Node Wars are pretty fun though. And then if you just like going into Battle Arena, that's cool too. But yeah, overall, that's uh, my recommendations of things you should do. If you have any comments or anything, feel free to leave it in the description. And once again, before we head out, I want to say thank you guys so much for all the support on the videos lately. I don't get a chance to say that enough. And so if you're new to the channel, I try to upload videos pretty regularly and would love to see you guys come back. Other than that, join my social media, Discord, Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. I want to post there more as well. And if you have any questions or any concerns, Leave it in the comments. Happy to help answer them. And one thing I started doing more often was people who are like new and you have a lot of questions, uh, join the Discord. We have a channel for Black Desert and you can just post like questions and help. So we have a community for people who also like playing Black Desert and you guys can get help from there or just me there as well. So yeah. Would love to see you guys come back. I upload pretty regularly for a lot of Black Desert stuff and other games on the side. And with that said, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.